season of buying and gifting and re-gifting, office parties and and uh, turkey and ham and festiveness and you know family reuniting. Perhaps we ought to pause and ask ourselves now what what do I render to God since it's his birthday that we celebrate? It's interesting that in a natural sense none of us become upset when Michelle has a birthday party and we attend the party and we don't get a gift because we understand it's her party and she is the object. She is the the object of the celebration. Sometimes it's 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 because of the commercialization of the season. Sometimes we get lost in the whole plethora of marketing and the whole cornucopia of movement, you know, merchants attempting to reach their bottom lines. And, and we forget that it's his birthday. And if there's going to be a mass, it's a mass for Christ, Christmas. And that it is procedurally Improper. It's a break in protocol to attend a person's party and to accept, to expect everybody gives you the gift when it's not your birthday. So the psalmist brings an alignment in terms of our understanding of the whole wherewithal of being a child of God. It is interesting to study the, uh, the background of the text, what, what prompts him to, comes to a place where in a poetic sense he begins to pen procedurally uh, uh, the commentary. It, it, is really, it flows out of a heart of thanksgiving. I think, ladies and gentlemen, that number one, the question before we bring God anything, we must ask, what does he require? You know, sometimes we give gifts that folk don't require. I'm almost sure that there are, or there is at least one person here, you've got something in your closet from last Christmas that you've not even worn or used. You know, and don't look to your left and to your right because you are given something that, number one, either you don't desire or either you don't require. It doesn't fit. It's, it's not in keeping with your taste. You know. That's why if you don't know a person's taste, it's best to give them a gift card. <laughs> Amen. See, if you're going to buy something for Cali, it's got to be shiny and furry. It's got to have a little bling to it. Yeah, yeah. And so now God goes on record, biblical chronicle record, as to what his wish list is for his mass. Number one, God wants the first and the fattest. You, know, you, 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 know, you just don't force anything on the Lord and 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 make an effort to make the Lord to feel that this is extremely valuable. You can't fool God with pleather and make him think it's leather. You're not going to get cut glass and ornately center it as a stone of opulence and significant importance and expense and make God think that Coca-Cola glass is a marquee from the diamond mines of South Africa. Because God's got a scrutinizing eye he can see within the gift. 
he can, he can, he can, he, he knows what it cost of what it didn't cost. And it's something about rendering stuff to God. If you give God something that he does not require or desire, come on, you may release it and finding that he never accepted it. How much futility, how much stuff, how much religion, how much tradition, how many, how many millions of dollars we spend giving God stuff that, that God never accepts. You know, it's in the lost and found. You know, it, it, it never, it's privileged to be upon, uh, under the canopy of his pleasure or in a station of eminence in one of God's regal living rooms because it's, it does not coordinate with my, the motif of my design. So for God to accept it now, uh, Abel offered unto God a sacrifice. So any time that you give or render something to God, it must be sacrificial for it to be accepted. Cain also offered a sacrifice. But it was a sacrifice that God did not desire, number one. Number two, that God never required. You can, do, you can expand. Expand is the root word for the word expensive. You can expend time and effort and, and be very tedious and laborious in doing stuff for God, around God, in the house of God, and find that it is not acceptable to God. The Bible said in the book of Hebrews that, that Abel offered, rendered unto God a more excellent gift. So that means that all gifts can be measured. God adjudicates the, the excellency of your gift, the, the level of excellency. Many in our lives, sometimes we're going to give God what's left over. Leftover time, you know. You know, we want to start our fast after dinner and end it before the next meal. You know, come on now. We, we, we always want to pray as we're moving. We don't want to sanctify and set apart specific time just for you and God. Uh, you know, we want to, but, but, but God says, now, Abel, I accept your gift. And the heavens opened and, and God consumed Abel's sacrifice. Now, Cain offered the best of his garden, you know. It wasn't as if it was no, it was not an effortless gift. He had to till the soil, plow it up, break up the rocks, remove the rocks. He had to make the rows and release the seed and plant the seed, water, wait for the time of harvest, the period of vegetation gestation where growth takes place. And so you can spend a lot of time doing stuff for God and give it to God and God does not desire it and God does not require it and God will not accept it. So now many folk are frustrated this morning because they've rendered stuff that God never asked you to give and you didn't give him what he told you to give. Ladies and gentlemen, all you had to do was read the list. He told you what he wanted, a blender, some silver forks, some china, come on now, and a toaster. But you went out and got a pillowcase, some baby oil, some grown folks pamper, and wonder why God did not accept it because God said it wasn't on my list. Now, when Cain got upset, because what he had offered or rendered to the Lord, God did not respond from heaven. There's always a response from heaven when God accepts a gift. There will always be, he, an anointing will fall on it. Come on now. And so now Cain gets upset because what his brother rendered was accepted and because what he rendered was not accepted.